Using a proper infrastructure helps us to troubleshoot things elegantly and more quickly when it specifically when it comes to outage um, when the entire team you know is, goes into the panic mode and uh, and developers you know try to figure it out things uh, especially in the context of microservice architecture um, where it's sometimes it's hard to troubleshoot things especially when uh, when when we are not using uh, a proper infrastructure. Um, so in this particular video we will talk about like you know uh, little tips and tricks uh, which can help uh, you know developers or engineers in general uh, to figure it out why things are working and why things are not working so if you are more curious about that so I have provided the timestamp below uh, you can directly jump towards the port forwarding technique um, but I want to you know emphasize more on the problem statement like what problem we are trying to solve here so given a situation you know when writing a code um, we have different set of profiles right uh, some of the profiles for the local system some of the for you know um, for the staging test and there are some configurations which are for the production right so here if you are a spring boot java developer i'm talking to, talking about the application properties um, it depends like how you manage but uh, the way generally it's like you have different configurations for a different environment and and things like that now let's assume uh, you know uh, the code is not written in the way uh, it's it's really um, hard to get sense out of it like why things are not working or where exactly the exception is coming or which condition is uh, you know breaking why things some of the things are working for specific users and some of the things are not really working for the other users at that point you know we always have this sort of a wish in our mind that you know i wish i could um you know debug using my id in the in the production and things like that uh, by the way i don't really recommend to you know uh, debug things in the production um but what happens is like sometimes you know these type of situations you know occurs uh, where the code is not really easy to read and um, figuring out what what's going wrong and things like that right but how to do that now because your local configurations are obviously communicating within the local systems or uh, you know they are not really aware about you know um, what are the things working on the production and what's their configurations and things like that right so uh, kubernetes has this uh, really good feature um, it, it's available in the other infrastructures as well like if you are working on the ecs amazon's uh, you know container service or any other um, container based service um, but here we will talk about specifically about the kubernetes um, so in the port forwarding what do you do is like you actually create a tunnel uh, between uh, your host machine to the to the container where the application is specifically running so as i said earlier like you know you have those configurations which is uh, based on your host uh, machine like let's say if you have two services let's say service a is you know communicating with service b and now obviously um, in your local profile you have this local host a and some port which is you know calling that service that's how you debug right but what happens you know in a situation where you don't really want to run you know too many services in your uh, in your host machine because running too many services within a single host is also you know not performance efficient your system might get slow or uh, that's that's one reason or what if you want to you know specifically communicate with uh, with a service running in a specific environment let's say it's a test or you know a staging where the configurations are different you want to debug those things so in such type of situation this this technique is really helpful and uh, i can give one one uh, you know interesting uh, interesting uh, application as well so in kubernetes you know we have the concept of uh, uh, node i never know in our cluster you know there can be multiple nodes right um, so what was happening is like you know one of our uh, third party uh, application provider uh, uh, you know this is this is really a common thing where if you want to communicate with a third party system so just for the purpose of security they want you to you know whitelist some of your ip address so that they can entertain their request and uh, they can you know trust on those requests uh, so uh, those um, things i mean they whitelist and i some somehow or the other they missed one one um, ip address and uh, that was you know one of our node in the kubernetes cluster so uh, so now what happens is like you know there are some containers which were running on um, you know uh, 
the nodes which were already whitelisted and you know there are some containers which are running on that node which is not really whitelisted so what happens in this case which i discussed earlier like you know some of the users are you know uh, able to perform that transaction successfully some of them are not now this is like a sort of a random thing now you you, you can't really uh, say that uh, what how the kubernetes scheduler work and you know which request fall into the which particular container and things like that so this is sort of a random uh, thing which you now have to troubleshoot in this case right uh, so um, with this port forwarding technique you know it will give you some idea like uh, uh, which particular container running on which particular node is you know failing so you will be able to you know get some clues like you know hey maybe this ip address or you know if i do ssh on that specific container uh then then you know uh you will get this timeout error this will gives you the clue that you know hey this ip address is we need to whitelist and you know figure it out or you can remove that node from the cluster altogether so how about let's you know go for the demo particular demo i'm using google cloud platform microservices demo huge shout out to them for all the developers who have uh, created this uh, nice uh, little demo uh, which can you know <laughs> gives you a good context how microservices can be uh, complex um, so for the purpose of kubernetes i'm using gke google cloud um, kubernetes engine uh, you can use Docker desktop or uh, any other um, mini cube or any other uh, container managed or container orchestration platform. Um, from the architecture perspective, uh, assuming you have this, uh, you are working on any uh, shopping related website uh, where you have, you know, a bunch of different microservices and, you know, one of the services is like public facing and all of those services are running in the cluster and uh, they are not directly accessible. So now let's say within that particular context, this payment service is, you know, further communicating with um, with any payment provider like PayPal or Paytm. And uh, assuming I don't know how PayPal works, but uh, assuming, you know, PayPal is uh, during the contract, you know, PayPal says like, you know, hey, provide some of the IP addresses so that we can whitelist and, you know, making sure the requests are coming from your servers. And they did that and things are working fine. But you know, for the some of the requests, as I mentioned, things are not working fine. So how to, you know, figure it out this thing. So in this case, you know, um, just for the purpose of illustration, assuming these services are deployed on the Kubernetes cluster. So what you actually do where you, you are, you know, when you are using your host machine, how, um, and you're, you're trying your brain, uh, to, you know, figure it out why things are working for some request and not. So in this particular case, what you can do is like you can create a port, port forwarding, which is like a tunnel uh, you are creating between the two systems. Uh, this is the, here, what you are saying is forwarding, sorry. Okay, so what you are saying is like, you know, um, you for in order to do this you need to know two things one is like you know in which particular port your payment is running within the container and what particular port you want to use to you know do a local host from your system right so whatever the port is available in your local system which is open uh, you can you know use that and you know forward all your request here to figure it out let's see so currently uh, uh, again, shout out to Google folks. Um, I'll share this link uh, as well in the in the description. So I have deployed all these applications in one of my Kubernetes cluster um, under the namespace demo. So let's see uh, what services we have. So these are all the bunch of services. Now we are specifically talking about the payment service where I described the scenario, right? So two things, as I mentioned, we need to know. One is like the target port and uh, what is the source port. So obviously source port is the one where uh, where your request will go through from. So this is like your host machine would, would decide like, uh, you, I mean, indirectly you will decide like which would be the source port. Assuming in our case, we will go with, you know, anyone which is like 8081, let's say. Now you need to figure it out the payment uh, port. In order to do that, we have uh, kubectl get service and demo. So if I run this command, this will gives me uh, uh, the description of all the services running in this namespace. So it seems it's uh, this, this particular service is running on this uh, 50051. So now how to port forward is, is pretty, you know, just it's a magic of one command. Uh, kubectl port forward you need to provide the namespace and uh, 
you need to provide the service name svc port forward oh sorry payment i'm sorry payment service and uh, in this case so first argument is like your source port which is like 801 8081 and the destination port which is like the port of this uh, payment service so if i do that now uh, assuming you are you want to debug this thing so now you will get this uh, you know sort of a luxury to you know access this service using the local host 8081 even though the service is not running on your uh, host machine but you have since you have created this tunnel you can you know communicate using the local host so you have got the clue like let's say if you have a configurations like application dot properties where uh, you know all your configurations are based on the local host and all you can just you know decide what port uh, your application is communicating you can uh, do and use this approach and this will allows you to you know debug uh, your application with with your you know favorite ide uh, so here i'm talking more about the spring boot but this is the same thing which applies in the you know other backend uh, technologies like you know whether you are working on the django or node um, under the hood it's you know if, if it is a restful api uh, it's just the uh, JSON which you are interested in or the response you know which uh, you are uh, trying to figure it out uh, from the server end so that's all from this video thank you for joining for, for watching this video if you like this video please uh, subscribe and comment